Welcome to the Cage Siders, Jeremy Long, along with the coach, Angelo Reyes. Coach, always good to see you. It's always great We're to see you. We're coming from a great fight weekend. Oh, Yo, well, to... not a great fight, but a great fight a weekend. Great fight weekend. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Listen to what I say. Great fight weekend. <laughs> okay. Coming off the hills of Anthony Joshua, Vladimir Klitschko, we have Canelo Alvarez and <laughs> Thomas <laughs> Jr. Julio Cesar Chavez uh, Jr. Okay, and, can, can, can I just say this real quick? Sure. If you guys did pay the eighty dollars, then of course you would you would be able to salvage it by saying to yourselves, it was a pretty good undercard. You know, Matisse scored the knockout. The David Lemieux fight was right. was very interesting with Marco Reyes. Um, the Jojo Diaz fight versus Tino Vila that was a pretty good fight. So leading up to the main event, you know, and 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 also having said that, guys, it's a hard act to follow. Joshua versus Klitschko, which is one of the classics of our sport. I believe our, our good friend Mauro Ronaldo said it, he, we're calling it now the war at Wembley. So we've had the thrill in Manila, the brawl in Montreal, the the rumble in the jungle. Now we have the war at Wembley. So I got I got to tell you, Jeremy. I mean, it's hard to live up to it, but yes, it really is. Chavez took the pooper. Yeah. <laughs> it, it really good. did. He really did, uh, and there's not much. I mean, there's so much you could say, but so much more you just you can't no, say. say uh, there, there, I mean, because you know the the game plan, according to him, with his coaches, was stay on the outside, try to box with them. Which, number one, it's either a lie or that's the most absurd game plan you could ever have and, against and a guy were, like Canelo. And I remember when we were watching it. I kept saying, no, no, maybe this is the game plan of the great Nacho Bearstein. Maybe they're just like, but around round four, I started thinking, nah, guys, nah, I'm sorry. Nah, he's not throwing. He's not throwing back. It's hard to win a fight when you're not throwing back. Now, we've seen heavy hitters in before, you know, you know MMA, boxing, stuff like that. You've seen heavy hitters before. Look for that one shot. Mm -hmm. And we, we discussed this uh, during the fight, that maybe he's looking for that one shot. Back him up against the ropes, his dirty fight inside, how Chavez, uh, as Chavez does it, you know, maybe he's looking for that one punch, you know, something like that, because he does have power. But it never came. Yeah, he never it, threw. It, even when he had, even when Canelo was willingly leaning up against the ropes, begging Chavez to engage, he never threw those punches. Yeah, and, and it's so hard to watch a fight like this. But, but I did say to... to the guys that we were with and everybody was watching a fight with us that this kind of reminded me of when Manny Pacquiao fought uh, Joshua Clotty at Dallas Cowboys Stadium. You know, Pacquiao's just too fast. He's just too strong. So we don't want to take away any credit from the amazing performance that Canelo just showed. And let's not forget, ladies and gentlemen, Canelo just fought at 164 and a half pounds, which is why I'm now excited about Canelo versus Triple G. Yeah. Finally! Finally! Finally. Finally. Put Mayweather and McGregor on the end of card is what I say. Absolutely. Uh, Dana White, you know, is very heartbroken. Their date you right. know, may or may not have been stolen. Mm. Uh, September 16th right here in Las Vegas. If it's all concluded and everything goes, you never know with boxing. Right. It's, it's always. But they announced it. Triple G, Canelo. That is going to be, I believe, the opposite of what we just saw. Uh, an opponent unwilling to engage versus two guys who are going to go out and I'm sure they're going to have their filling out process. I'm sure they're going to have the first couple of rounds where they're, you know, getting their timing down and stuff like that. But after that, you know, I don't, I'm not going to say it's going to be Marvin Hagler, you know, that, that, you know, the three rounds of, uh, you yeah. know, the best three rounds of boxing and stuff we like that. We might get a pretty good one. Though. But we might get a good one. When <laughs> yeah. these guys warm up, we might get a really good one. And the way this year is going, 2017 with boxing, I think. The resurrection I'm hoping, of the I really, of boxing again. I really hope these guys go out there. Now, of course, you know, you don't want, you know, whoever your favorite is, Canelo or Triple G, you don't want that guy to lose, but you want that entertaining match, that entertaining bout where these guys, that that harkening back to yeah, the 80s, no. 70s, yeah, 80s, where, stuff where like that. See rematches. You stand toe-to-toe, -to -toe and you guys go at it. You got two guys. Uh, I, I don't want to say in their prime because Triple G is a little bit older, a little uh, bit older, but he hasn't really pretty been. pretty good, man. This he's older, I know, I'm, I'm, but, he's, he, you know, but he's not 27. Well, it's not a bad comparison when you're talking about how he could be Hagler Hurts. Yeah, Hagler he could Hurts. could 100% be Hagler Hurts. Yeah, that's what you're hoping for. Well, that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. Other guys, they want boxing, and I love it when people on Twitter call me out and say, you don't know boxing. 
Yeah. Okay, all right. It says all of your zero and zero record either. You don't know boxing, but you know you, you want this to happen and for it to happen here in Las Vegas. You know, hoping, I, um, but they have talked about how maybe Dallas Cowboys team. Dallas and Cowboys here's one for you. That's kind could of, it really do a hundred thousand? Uh, I don't know about that because we're not quite in England. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think but, so. Um, how about this though? How about if it was in L.A. Because Golovkin's based out of there, Canelo's based out of there. Why would it be impossible for it to be a California, uh, a Southern California fight? And um, I think it would definitely fill up maybe the Rose Bowl. Staples Center? Staples Center, definitely. Staples Center for Rose sure. Bowl, eh, it might be another stretch. 50,000? Canelo did it in Dallas. Uh, maybe so. All right. Maybe so. Let's see how they market it. Let's see what the game plan is. You know, But otherwise, I'm, I'm excited for the fight. I know you're excited for the fight, and if you love boxing, you're excited for the fight overall. So what we're going to do is we're going to have one of our favorite segments. After this break, who would you bet on? We're going to have the illustrious Dan Tom back in studio. He's going to drop knowledge on us, baby. Protect your neck podcast. He's going to tell us. He's going to tell us who the winners and losers are going to be this weekend. So you want to stick around for that. Right after this break, we're going to have more. Who would you bet on from the Cage Siders? Stay with us. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Cage Siders. Jeremy Long, along with the coach, Angelo Reyes. And we're joined in studio by our guest, Dan Tom, back again to show us how to do it because Angelo and I can't seem to pick winners <laughs> on these who damn you fights. <laughs> so we bring Dan Tom back to break down UFC 211. Guys, let's start with the first main card fight, which is Henry Cejudo and Mr. Pettis. Ooh. Man, well, I got to tell you, Dan, I like this. I, I like the fight. Pettis versus Cejudo, though, I don't know if it's a little uh, too soon for Pettis. I can't pick against Henry Cejudo on this one. Uh, but you're the expert. You tell us. Well, this is a funny one. This is one of those ones where I come in favor in one guy, but I end up going toward the other. Now, that was the deserved favorite, Henry Cejudo. He's the Olympic wrestler. He's recently challenged for the title. Aside to losing to DJ, he's, he's, he's been unblemished. Right. But after looking at it closer, I think Pettis, who I believe is the A-side of the Pettis brothers, I actually think he can stifle him on the ground, and he's a much cleaner striker. He throws in much more straight lines. Cejudo's a little more wide, and even though Cejudo mm -hmm. showed massive improvements, I actually had him beating Benavidez. I think Pettis, Sergio Pettis, this is his coming out party. I think he can outpoint him in a close decision. Betters, keep your money away from Cejudo. This is an infl inflated line at 4-1. to one. You're getting a lot of value if you like Pettis. This is a dog or pass. Man, go. what do you think, Coach? Oh, well, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm the emotional picker, people. I'm picking Cejudo. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> against this guy. <laughs> so I'm going Cejudo. I can't go against Cejudo. Pettis, Cejudo, you know what? I like Sergio Pettis in this. Okay. So I'm going to go with Pettis on this one. Uh, the next matchup is one that's really got everyone talking. Frankie Edgar, the former champion against Yaya Rodriguez, the up-and-coming Mexican star. So, Dan, take it away, bro. This is another one that was really kind of, I was kind of on both sides coming in, but I'm going with the veteran here. Essentially, it comes down to Frankie Edgar is more proven. I think he's going to be mixing it up with takedowns. I feel that Yair is improving. He's doing great work, particularly under Mike Valley, who I know you like, Coach. But the thing is, he hasn't brought all those tools yet into the octagon, and until he does, aside from a big head kick knockout, I see Frankie Edgar winning. I think he has to finally, Rodriguez, that is, finally pays his taxes. It's going to resemble Eric Silver versus John Fitch. A little bit of throwback for you, but I got Frankie Edgar the favorite here. Oh, man. Well, you know, the coach picks emotionally. And we just had uh, Coach Mike Valley on our show. And he would've, what do we say, Jeremy? If you guess on our no show, if you guess on our show, you win. So <laughs> I'm picking Yair Rodriguez. Um, they were kind enough to let us watch their private workout, and I don't want to divulge too much of the information on the type of things that I saw, but uh, Yair is 5'11", almost six foot tall, makes 145, no problem. Chicks so fast, knee, everything is unpredictable from an elbow, 
to the punches. He can go right side. He can go left side. So I'm actually picking uh, Yair Rodriguez. I'm going to pick him by stoppage. And I'm thinking it's going to be a flying knee or uh, <laughs> like one of those spinning roundhouse taekwondo kicks that he likes to throw. That, that, that's like a parlay bet. You know, I'm flying just saying. knee, specific move. That you, if I get it right, guys, you'll know. Uh, you know what? I like actually, I, I'm going to go with Dan Tom here. Okay. I like Frankie Edgar. He's a very, very tough veteran guy. You know, he's, I don't. He's definitely not B.J. Penn, folks. He's not. <laughs> you know, Yair kind of had his way with B.J. Penn. I'm thinking quite the opposite with Frankie Edgar. He knows how to put those damn hands on people, so I'm going to go with Frankie Edgar on this All one. right. I think we're figuring out why Jeremy wins and beats me. <laughs> He's picking Dan Tom's picks. Masvidal versus Damian. Okay, Dye, here we go, Jeremy. Dan Tom. Woo, this one is fire written all over it. Now, it's, it's very hard to bet against Maya, who I believe is 18-2 and two in fights where he secures at least – one takedown. That's a that's a serious statistic. But Jorge Masvidal's very good takedown defense, not just percentage-wise, but similar to the dynamic of the Robert Whitaker versus Jacare fight we discussed last time yep. I was on the program. Yep. Masvidal has the defensive wrestling tactics to not just defend but circle away and even counter. I think Masvidal is going to get it done inside the distance. I don't know which round, but it's going to be toward the end of the round once Damian starts to tire and after his best takedown attempts fail. Wow. Well, what do you think, Coach? I'm picking Masvidal <laughs> because I'm an emotional picker, and Masvidal is a, he, he comes from a Cuban school of boxing. I like his striking, and as great as Damian Maia is, I don't believe Damian Maia will be able to grab him, take him down, and submit him. I believe Masvidal will knock him out. I'm going to say second round with a left hook. Oh, okay, there you go. You know what? I think Damian Maia may go down as the Dan Marino of MMA. I think he's going to be, I, he's a great, great fighter. I don't think he'll ever capture a championship. I think his time is kind of come and gone. Jorge Masvidal is kind of on that run. He's on that run. He's that guy in the playoffs you don't want to play. He's the Giants of two, you know, of these years when they win their championships. He's that guy that's just on it and about it right now. I'm going to go on Masvidal with this one. Too. Okay. So, you know, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, all right. So here's the great women's fight. We've talked about for weeks and weeks and months and months. And ever since we had Jessica Andrade on our show months ago, Jessica Andrade, Joanna champion. Dan Tom, take it away. Now, this was a fight where I came in favoring the champion, although I will say I now am going more toward the challenger. Now, that's not just because the coach here. I got to see him work a little bit of his magic with right. Joanna Yanjacek. Um, it, although it does worry me a little bit that she's not working with the coach, and more importantly, up here in Vegas with a lot of high-level training partners. But... That doesn't change the fact that Jessica Andrade has the tools that have traditionally troubled the champion, and that is pressure. Pressure on all levels. She's like the female John Lineker. Anytime she gets her opponent to those inner black octagon lines of the fence, that's where she does her most damage. And that's where we've seen you and Jay Check started to take damage. Like the great George St. Pierre, these five round wars add up no matter who you are. But unlike George St. Pierre, she did not have the takedown to mitigate that damage she's taken in these fights. So, unless she stops or hurts significantly Andrade with elbows or kicks off the break, I think that Andrade is eventually going to be that steam engine that gains speed, gains speed, and I think she's going to at least take three of the five early rounds for a bloody decision. All right, Coach. bloody decision. Now, I, now again, guys, I cannot go against Jessica Andrade. Um, I had the pleasure of getting a chance to work with her and her head coach, uh, uh, Coach Gilliard. Uh, and um, I, emotionally, I'm going Jessica Andrade, but let me tell you guys why Joanna is such a favorite uh, for a fight like this. I mean, Joanna Jinchacek, she's tall. She knows striking. So if your plan is to try to outstrike Joanna, it's not a very good plan. Um, she can... She can punch you with so many different numbers that it could cut up your face. She throws massively great elbows that can that can cause cuts. Fantastic kickings. And really, we've seen her even in the, in the Muay Thai collision and the knees. So she's powerful in all of that sense. I do agree with my man, though, Nan Tong, that Jessica Andrade puts so much pressure into people that she's a different beast on its own. So um, this could turn out to be a classic fight. Uh, I think it's one of the ones where we may even want to see a rematch. I'm going Jessica Andrade, and I'm thinking Jessica Andrade will submit her because of uh, because of her abilities to get it done uh, and submission in the fourth round. And I'm going to say Kamora. There you go. All right, I am also I'm taking Andrade. Awesome. Okay. She's big. She's powerful. 
Joanna, yes, there's nothing against the champion. I actually, I love this young lady, and I love Jessica ever since her time in and everything. But she, I think she, she's got that power, man. I think they're going to test it out. I think you got two ladies up and coming young. You know, I think they're looking to make a statement here in this co-main event that they should be the damn main event. Yeah. And I think they're going to step it up. I think they're going to slug it out. And that one, I think Andrade with that power, I think she's going to bring it home. So we got about a minute left. Let's talk about this main event. Stipe Miocic versus Junior Dos Santos. Boy, this is another close one. This is two heavyweights, guys. They both can end it at any time, and you can also make the argument that they both could win a decision. In right. fact, I actually think, despite their heavy-hitting sensibilities, this is going to go five rounds. This is two competitive boxers, but I give the edge to Stipe. His pressure is a little more well-rounded. I think he's going to make the adjustments. He was a couple adjustments away from the last fight. Usually, it's the guy who take, makes the adjustment takes the rematch. I got Stipe by decision. Ooh. Emotional better. Oh, Jesus. I'm going JDS. I'm going JDS by knockout. And it's. I think it's going to be because of his boxing. I think that JDS has shown such a, 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 re, a reinvigorated JDS with his jab and then his hook and his cross. So I'm, I'm picking JDS, winner, knockout, punching. Very quickly, you know, I... I I agree with all of that, but I like Stipe, man. I like he's from Cleveland. I like he's from that rust belt. I like that he <laughs> wants to put those hands on people, baby. This is the this is the round where I say, everyone's putting hands on people on this one. Buy this card, UFC 2-1-1, Dallas, Texas. That's all I got to say. Stipe, all right, when we come back, we're going to have more from the Cage Time Stand Top. Awesome. Go with his picks. Go with his picks. Right, we'll see you in just a minute. Welcome back, Cage Sider fans, and finally, we have on our show, the mystery man, the champ, Jesse Magdaleno. Thanks for joining us. One of these days, we're going to pin you down and get you in the studio. Of course. But uh, we're, here we are, we're at the Art of Music here in the MGM Grand. We're enjoying the festivities for Canelo Chavez, obviously, mm -hmm. right? You just had an amazing second round knockout, mm -hmm. defense of your 122 pound title. Everybody's now starting to look at you and go, oh my gosh, yeah. here we go, Jesse Magdaleno may be the best 122 pounder out there. So um, I know you're not a, I'm going to call out a guy yeah, kind yeah. of person, but Rigandale. And I want to talk about this because for the longest time, when Rigandau had dominated Nonito Donaire mm -hmm. and dominating all these other fighters, everybody keeps going, well, the reason why Rigandau is not getting any fights is because no one wants to fight him. Mm -hmm. But I hear that's not true. I hear you said from the get-go, I'll fight him right now. Can you talk to us about that a yeah, little bit? of course. Um, my last fight, um, Christina Poncher uh, interviewed me, and uh, she, she gave me a name. She said, who would you like to see at 122 pounds? And I said, if the fans want to see Jesse Magdaleno and Regendahl go at it, then let's make it happen. You know, and uh, what's, what's there a better fight, you know? He's, he's one of the top, you know, besides Johnny Thurner, one of the top 122 pounders out there, and that's who I want to fight. I already fought one guy, beat him. You know, and he was the best. Hall of Famer, Nonito Rone. Beat him, he's out of the way. Now, who else is next? Rigondeau. That's who I want to go after. And that's really the, the type of fighter you are. You're going after legendary names yes. or high level profile names in the sport. Mm -hmm. Matchup wise, and again, I know you, you don't like, you don't want to give it away too much, but what about your style do you feel makes you want to take on a Rigondeau? Because most people are kind of like, ooh, yeah. Rigondeau, that's a tough fight. But how come you're not so, how come you're not one of the guys going, no, I don't think that's a tough fight at all. I can take him. Because I, I think, I think every fight's a tough fight. You know, everybody has a different style. Everybody has different ways of boxing. And myself, I worked with, with a lot of Latinos. And I trained with uh, Ismael Salas, which was Nonito Donaire's uh, trainer in the past. And I kind of got that Cuban feel. And I've watched their steps. I watched the way they study. You know, I had um, I had a trainer that, that taught me everything as well. So I think that's what built my confidence up a little bit more. And then beating the Donaire, you know, the same way Rigandau beat him, outbox him. I have a similar style to Rigandau, and I, I think I think it'll be a great matchup. Yeah, that's the and this is the type of uh, of fights we're always looking for. We we've been talking about on our show how Klitschko versus Joshua they delivered. Badu Jack, James DeGale, they delivered. Sean Porter, 
uh, uh, Keith Thurman, they deliver it. And uh, Jesse Magdaleno Rigandow would deliver it. Now, I know there's the business aspect yes, of things. Of course. So what would be next for you? Because I don't think, um, I think Rigandow is already fighting someone or is already yeah, scheduled yeah. to fight somebody. So what's next for you? Are you taking a break or you're you're beating people up so easily <laughs> and you're not even cutting the face? You don't um, even look like you're in a fight. What is next? What did the promoter say? I I'm ready for whatever, you know? I, I haven't got a phone call yet to say what's next, but Whatever comes out my way, whatever comes knocking at the door, from what I hear so far, it might be Cesar Juarez. Ooh! So that's what we're looking for. They they gave him a. Um, he was actually there on my last fight. He was there live, and um, you know, Christina Poncho asked me that he was there, and would I would I be willing to fight him? Of course, I'll fight I'll fight Cesar Juarez. I'll fight anybody at 122 pounds. You know, that's that's my dream to accomplish and to conquer this weight division and then move up. Okay, all right. Well, now one last question, because we are a boxing and MMA show, and we always ask the fighters, hey, do you like watching MMA? Um, yeah. I know your brother is sparred with Cub Swanson, and mm -hmm. they're with the same coach. Yeah, we um, both have. Yeah, <laughs> now, oh, you oh, I get out of here. You sparred Cub, Cub Swanson? I sparred him, too. Oh, my yeah. gosh. So tell us about that. It was great sparring. You know, it's different. Like I said, it's, it's, very, it's very different, because his style of moving is a lot different from, from a boxer. And, um, you know, it just felt incredible being in there with them. Wow! So yeah. even the height difference and yeah, the yeah, size, the it didn't matter? It didn't matter, you know? You go Did he kick you? Did he no, knee no, you? No, no. <laughs> oh, see, that's where, that's where he would have whipped my ass. But uh, on a stand-up, it, it was a it was an equal match. Okay. You know? He moved, we worked, and uh, showing him the, uh, what to expect, you know? Thank you so much, Jesse, for joining us. Congratulations Thank with you. your Thank continued you. success. And uh, Kate Sider fans will be back for more. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Cage Siders. Jeremy Long, along with my co-host, Angelo Reyes. Angelo, uh, great show. Yeah, good show. Great show, man. Jesse Magdaleno. Finally, finally we pinned him down. We said, look, listen, listen, Jesse. Which, Give us our interview. Which is just what you do with the world champion boxer. <laughs> you right. pin him up against the wall like Angelo did, <laughs> and you bro. scream at him. That's not what Always good. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, and then we had, uh, of course, Dan Tom. Yeah. And we're going to have our picks. Yeah. Who would you bet on? Who would you bet on? Tell I us. would bet on Who whatever bet Dan on? Tom said. I'll tell you guys that much. Yeah, I'm going to tell went, you that He went up. perfect the last time we had him on the show. So if he goes perfect, he will win you a lot of money. <laughs> Don't, whatever he says, do the opposite. Because he's so bad at this. I pick emotionally, guys. That's what I do. So, Gervonta Davis. Yeah. Jerry Russell, they're going to be fighting upcoming. Yeah, next week. Uh, that'll be a, a fun, fun uh, event. And actually, uh, he's fighting in England. It'll be aired on uh, Showtime. And then also Gary Russell is fighting, which will also air on Showtime. So um, best, uh, one of the best 126-pound uh, fighters out there in Gary right. Russell Jr. And then um, Javante Davis, man. You know how excited I am oh, about man. Javante, I mean, He's training right Javante here right now. Javante Davis is. Yeah. Google. Oh, Google Javante. Or Davis. go to Mayweather Gym right now. He's still there. Yeah, go to Mayweather Gym right now <laughs> and yell at him like he did with uh, Jesse Magdaleno. <laughs> and you'll find out very quickly who Javante Davis is. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. So we want to thank you so much for tuning in every single week. We thank all you guys for subscribing to Cage Siders on iTunes for our podcast, yep. which is additional uh, uh, interviews and things like that. So, you know, thank you all so much. And checking out our website, uh, www.cagesiders.com. And following this guy at the War Weekly on Twitter. Ray is striking. So, for everyone here at the Action Channel, Cage Siders, thank you so much. Join us each and every week right here, 7 a.m., 6 p.m., Fridays, on the Action Channel. All right, we'll see you next time. <laughs>